It seems from our last episode that to avoid looking at the edge of any dimension, we need to add an additional dimension for observation. In dimension 1, for instance, to avoid being stuck looking down the x-axis of any line segment, we add another dimension to gain a perspective of the line segment from the side versus just looking at the endpoint. In dimension 2, then, to avoid looking at just the edge of a plane and therefore peering down the y-axis, we add another dimension for observation to gain a perspective of the plane from the front side versus is just looking at it from the edge. And lastly, in dimension 3, we seem to be unaware of the difference between looking down the z-axis and therefore at the face of a cube, for instance, versus looking at the depth of a cube by adding another dimension for observation. So where in the world would this extra dimension for observation come from, since we only have three dimensions? This slide from episode 12 provides a little more insight into the problem if we focus on this portion of the graphic. Notice that it shows four lines and not three. All of these lines are at right angles to one another and they represent the axes that each direction is being projected into. The x-axis in red, the y-axis in green, the z-axis axis in blue and the W axis in pink. This is our typical representation of three-dimensional space with its three axes of X, Y, and Z. Absolutely every location in our three-dimensional space can be plotted using just these three coordinates. So where is this supposed W axis located and why do we even need it? Let's start with the first question. Where is the W axis located? The W axis contains all points where X equals Y equals Z in our typical three coordinate system. The same as the other three axes, the W axis contains both positive and negative numbers. Examples of points along the W axis would be 0, 0, 0, negative 2, negative 2, negative 2, and 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, etc. As for the second question of why do we even need a W axis? Looking at a sphere in three dimensional space, we notice that it does not change shape regardless of how we look at it. This is completely contrary to what we observe with a cube. A cube does change shape and more importantly, it also appears to change dimension. As shown in episode 20, a cube will appear to flatten and become a square if we observe the cube while looking down any one of the X, Y, or Z axes. In other words, if our axis of observation is looking straight down one of the other axes, the object will appear to reduce down one dimension. A line will appear as a point, a plane appears as a line, and a cube appears as a plane. This is quite the conundrum then in our three-dimensional world. If we look at a cube from various angles, it will appear to change dimensions and reduce down to a plane but look at a sphere from various angles and it will always appear to be a sphere. How is this possible that the shape of an object affects whether or not the object appears to reduce down one dimension? And yet, this is an inconsistent phenomenon because spherical objects do appear to flatten with increased distance, as evidenced by looking at the flatness of a full moon and imagining it as a disk. If we revert to our typical view of the XY plane only, we infer depth as being from the front of our screen to the back. We are therefore looking straight down the z-axis and this is our axis of observation. If we now change our view to the XYZ space, we are no longer looking down the z-axis and yet we still have this axis of observation from the front of our screen to the back and it's fixed. The conventional wisdom regards this view as being contained within the other three axes and therefore dismissible, redundant, and irrelevant. Starting with the sphere, we can cut it in half by slicing it down any axis. We now have two hemispheres. We can then slice each hemisphere by either of the remaining two axes and get four wedges. And lastly, we can slice each of the four wedges in half by the remaining axis to get eight octants. If we remove all eight octants, we can show that each of the X, Y, and Z axes are calibrated with both positive and negative numbers. Imagine then that our axis of observation the W axis is fixed looking from the front of your screen to the back right through the center point of 0, 0, 0 and that the positive numbers are on the front side of your screen and the negative numbers on the back side. Dimensionology states that all volumes and surfaces of spheres in any dimension will have a positive value. That means that every possible point in three-dimensional space is contained within this one octant, the one with positive numbers only. If we look at the four axes on our XYZ graph, you can see that this is remarkably similar to the graphic from episode 12 that we had shown previously. However, only the positive numbers of the W axis are contained within the positive numbers of the other three axes. The negative numbers of the W axis are located completely outside of this octant and therefore outside of our three-dimensional space. With a little imagination, 
we can use this available space to illustrate an extra dimension. By placing ourselves anywhere along the negative numbers of the w-axis, we can view our three-dimensional world from a completely different perspective. Observing from inside three-dimensional space is viewing our world from the edge, while observing from outside three-dimensional space adds an additional dimension. In 1888, Charles Hinton coined the terms Anna and Kata to describe two directions in four-dimensional space. Looking at this typical XY plane, the x-axis is for the left side and the right side, the y-axis for the upside and the downside, and the z-axis is inferred to be for the front side and the back side. When we change the graph to our typical xyz space, we have all three of the previous axes accounted for, but we are still looking down the axis of observation, the w-axis. The Anna side is our physical default, which is shown on the right and contained within the octant. This is viewing our world from the inside of three-dimensional space. The Kata side is shown on the left, and it's viewing our world from the outside of our three-dimensional space. This additional dimension for observation via the W-axis provides us a variety of potential opportunities, which we'll examine in our next episode. This is Jeff Zabo for Dimensionology. Up next, dimensional quashing. <laughs>